na hili swala ambalo wakenya wamekuwa na maswali chungu nzima kuhusiana na mpango wa kutoa asilimia tatu kwa ule mpango wa kujenga nyumba za bei nafuu. Wakenya wanauliza ni kwa nini wanalazimishwa manake wengine wanaona ni kana kwamba wanalazimishwa pengine hawako tayari kuwa wamiliki wa nyumba wengine wanasema ya kwamba hawakuhusishwa kabla ya yale mapendekezo na tumeshuhudia miungano mbalimbali mbali ya wafanyikazi ikisema ya kwamba ikiwa mapendekezo hayo yatapitishwa basi kutakuwa na migomo Ni swali nzuri sana ume umeniuliza kwa sababu ni swali ambalo nimekuwa nikingojea kujibu Nataka uh, wa Kenya wanisikize kwa makini. Niko na maswali matatu. Ambayo sisi kama wa Kenya lazima tujiulize. Jambo la kwanza. Ni kwa sababu gani watoto wetu vijana wa taifa letu la Kenya milioni tano, wanaangaika barabarani, wanazunguka madukani, hawana ajira. Swali la kwanza. Swali la pili ni kwa sababu gani taifa letu la Kenya iko na vitongoji duni slums elfu moja, mia moja na arobaini na moja wa Kenya milioni sita ndugu yangu hapo milioni sita wanaishi katika vitongoji duni hakuna maji hakuna choo hakuna barabara Kenya yetu hii milioni sita why Jambo la tatu. Ni kwa sababu gani katika taifa e, letu la Kenya hakuna nyumba mwananchi wa kawaida anaweza kununua. Nyumba yote ile iko Beijing sana milioni tano. Mortgage elfu, elfu sitini. Wa Kenya wangapi wanaweza kulipa mortgage ya elfu sitini? Jambo la ine wale watu ambao wanafanya kazi sisi tunaolipwa na ushuru ya wakenya ni watu elfu mia saba. kuanzia rais mpaka eh, kupitia kwa mawaziri kupitia kwa madaktari kupitia kwa walimu kupitia kwa wauguzi mpaka wale wa chini messengers na wale wengine 700000 yeah? tunalipwa na ushuru ya hao wakenya wote imefika wakati rafiki yangu tufikirie ni vipi sisi tulio na bahati ya kufanya kazi na sio kwamba ati mimi kwa sababu ni rais leo ati mimi ni bora kuliko wengine ama wewe kwa sababu ni mwalimu ati wewe ni bora kuliko wale wengine ile kazi mimi nafanya kama rais na ile kazi mwalimu anafanya na ile kazi daktari anafanya Ina, kuna wa Kenya zaidi ya elfu tano, elfu sita wanaweza kufanya hiyo kazi. Wewe umebahatika. Wewe ndio uko na hiyo kazi na ndio kwa sababu wale wengine hawana hiyo kazi. So ile swali lazima tuulizane ni kwamba mpango ambao utatupatia sisi nafasi ya kuajiri watoto wetu ya kutoa aibu ya hawa watoto wetu wanaangaika barabarani wanaangaika madukani ndio wale wameingia kwa ulevi ndio wale wameingia kwa madawa ni, li, ni, ni nini tutafanya na ndio niliwaeleza wa Kenya wakati nilienda kwa campaign niliwaambia wa Kenya nchi zingine China Singapore Korea ile wamefanya wameweka mipango katika labor intensive infrastructure programs many of them wameweka mpango katika mambo ya housing. So, hii housing sio nyumba. Naona watu wengi wanasumbuka, ah sisi hatutaki nyumba bwana. Mbona nani alikwambia tunahitaji nyumba? You know? Sio nyumba peke yake ndio tunatafuta kwa hii mpango. Ni kweli nyumba itapatikana tuondoe wale wa Kenya milioni sita na nusu wanaishi katika slums. Ni kweli. Lakini wacha tafadhali. Okay. Lakini ya muhimu zaidi ni kwamba kila nyumba tunayojenga tunapata ajira ya vijana wetu watano kila nyumba zile nyumba ambazo tumeweka katika mpango yetu half a million no 1 million in the next five years 500 200,000 every year hizo nyumba 200,000 every year 
itatupatia nafasi ya ajira kati ya vijana milioni moja na milioni mbili. Ndio tumesema vile wengine wamefanya tunasema kila mfanyikazi atoe asilimia tatu. na sio asilimia tatu ya mshahara yako yote ile inaitwa basic pay mwalimu kwa mfano basic pay pengine ni 1030 sawa shilingi eh, asilimia tatu ni shilingi 900 right na tu, atusemi hiyo 900 ati ni ushuru si ushuru ni pesa yako lakini unatupatia kwa muda tufanyie mpango ya wale watoto wetu wanaoranda randa barabarani wengine wao ni watoto wetu wa kuwazaa our own children kuwapangia ajira sawa na hiyo that's why ni watu waelewe it is a win win project wewe ukitoa asilimia tatu abdi mwenye amekuajiri anatoa asilimia tatu kumaanisha na hiyo asilimia sita yote ni pesa yako sio pesa ya mwajiri tena ni pesa yako na sio ushuru ni pesa yako tunaelewana na hiyo pesa ndio tunataka kutumia kujenga hazina ambayo itatusaidia kufanya mambo matatu ya muhimu jambo la kwanza leo tunajenga nyumba asilimia moja, 1% ya nyumba zote zinajengwa Kenya inaweza kununuliwa na mwananchi wa kawaida. Tunataka kuongeza nyumba ambazo zinajengwa ambazo zinaweza kununuliwa na mkenya wa kawaida kutoka asilimia moja mpaka asilimia hamsini. Wacha niwaeleze wa Kenya vile hiyo kazi itafanyika. Tuko na mipango miwili. Tuko na yenye tunaita social housing. Tuko na nyingine tunaita affordable housing. Social housing ni kwa wale watu wa mapato yao ya chini. Tunasema yule mtu ambaye anaishi kibira yule mtu ambaye anaishi madhari yule mtu ambaye anaishi Kisumu Kondele yule mtu ambaye anaishi hapo Kakamega ama anaishi Moranga ama anaishi Kiambu ambaye analipa rent kwa ile nyumba ambayo haina cho haina e, ta haina maji shilingi na tano huyo mtu na elfu mbili na mia tano yake tunataka kumjengea nyumba atalipa shilingi elfu mbili na mia tano kwa nyumba ambayo iko na maji nyumba ambayo iko na eh, facilities iko na kitchen iko na iko na iko na choo na analipa shilingi elfu mbili na mia tano wakenya watataka wata kuniuliza eh, bwana hasla hiyo nyumba iko wapi nataka ni muni 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 hapa Soweto. Okay. Kibra. Soweto A. Pale kuna kiongozi ya wamama, eh, kuna kiongozi ya hiyo Soweto A anaitwa Mama Shiro. Alikuwa anaishi kwa nyumba haina choo, haina maji. Leo anaishi kwa nyumba ambayo analipa 2500 na ni nyumba ya korofa. Hako kwa flat yake. So what am I saying? My friend. I am saying kwa wale ndugu zetu we have a duty kwa sababu wengi wao wana, wanauliza kusema how is it my business inanihusu nini kama yule hana kazi inanihusu nini kama anaishi kwa eh, slum inanihusu nini my friends mimi nataka niwaambie mm. inakuhusu kwa sababu yule unamdharau ndio analipa ushuru wewe ukapata mshahara number one. number two, yule ambaye unamdharau huyo pengine ni ndugu yako pengine ni dada yako ama ni mkenya mwenzako jambo la tatu hasara yako ni nini kwa sababu ukitoa tisa kama ni mwalimu tunakuongezea tisa kama serikali kama mwajiri wako ya yeah? usipotoa tisa atukupe tisa lakini ukitoa tisa tunakupatia tisa alafu kama huhitaji nyumba baada ya muda miaka saba, ama ukitaka kwenda retire tunakurudishia pesa yako kama hujatumia kununua nyumba na tunaongeza interest kama kama uh, unataka kutumia kwa njia nyingine unaweza kumpatia mtoto wako 
akatumia kununua ile nyumba okay well so, uh, uh, affordable acha niende hapo kwa kwa affordable housing kidogo tu okay. tafadhali briefly we need to proceed also. tafadhali okay, thank you kwa sababu unajua hii maswali ni mingi yeah. watu wengi wanasema lakini bwana eh hii sasa hata kama ni mia tisa, si nitachukua miaka sitini. ndio niweze kununua nyumba that is not the case hii pesa ambayo unatoa sio ya wewe kununua nyumba pale tukishajenga manyumba ya kutosha ambaye wewe unaweza kugarimu kwa ile mshahara yako uko na tunajenga nyumba ya 2500 4600 8000 8, the most expensive house tunajenga ni karibu 1012 eh, three bedroom house so tunasema hivi ile pesa ambayo tunaweka pamoja ni kutupatia uwezo ya kuleverage kwa hiyo pesa kama ni bilioni tano, tunaweza kuitengeneza kiuchumi iwe mara tano, mara saba. tuweze kuitumia kujenga manyumba <coughs> hii manyumba itatusaidia kwa wale wanaishi katika vitongoji na hata wale wengine wote ambao wanalipa rent badala ya kulipa rent wewe utaingia kwa eh, nyumba ambayo badala ya kulipa rent utalipa mortgage okay, Mr. President Naelewana? Wacha yep. ni wacha ni mali zetu kidogo. Huyu jamaa anasema sasa eh, mimi nalipa rent saa hii ya uh, 1500 na nakatu wa uh, 900 itakuwaje. Kama unaweza kulipa rent 1500 eh, mbona usilipe log mortgage 500 ndio nyumba iko yako iko dhambi gani? Na katika hiyo harakati Number one, umesaidia nchi yako. Umesaidia wale jamaa hawana kazi, lakini wanatusaidia kulipa ushuru ndio mshahara yetu. Mimi kama rais na wewe kama daktari na wewe kama mwalimu na wewe kama mjumbe na wewe kama MCA ilipwe. Pia tuwasaidie wapate ajira. Tuwasaidie wapate mahali pa kuishi. Na jambo la tatu, tuhakikisha kwamba mashamba yetu ambayo kwa sasa You know, yanakatwa katwa ili wananchi waishi we start to consolidate our position kama eh, townships in any case statistics show my brothers and sisters that the future is urban by 2050 68% of people will be living in towns so we have a choice are they coming to live in slums when they come to because they will come okay or are they going to live in decent houses thank you mr president and if they are going to live in decent houses mm. you know we have to engage in this win win program okay, in mr. this president. program let me just allow me one minute in this program because it is very important to me okay. and it is very important to every kenyan and i want every kenyan to understand why they have to contribute 3% of their salary it is not that it is a tax it is your money my good people Okay. And we are going to double that money using your employer. And Mr. we are going President, to get that money yeah, in interest. And okay. we are going to support <laughs> us. You are going to help us to employ the millions of young people including your sons and daughters in uh, you give have time for the questions you now. You have, okay. And Mr. President, you have a very ambitious plan. Thank you. The, the housing <laughs> the housing plan. Um my question is are you saying that um those lucky enough to secure jobs um will be contributing to this fund? um so that um you cushion you know the the most vulnerable in the society um we have millions of jobless kenyans out there uh, don't you think theirs could be an earning problem and not a saving problem because now if you say the, the, theirs is a an earning problem yes not a saving problem so even if you make these houses very very affordable some of them cannot even afford that 2500 and then my question too on that if i'm already paying for mortgage why should i be forced to contribute to the fund very good question if you are paying a mortgage nothing stops you as somebody who is employed yeah number one, contributing to this fund because it is not a tax it is your money what you are doing you are playing your patriotic duty because out there we have millions of young people who get out of school every year it is our responsibility me and you 
Why is it our responsibility? Because they are the taxpayers that end up paying our salaries, right? And it is our duty also to see how we can help them in a small way. And you have said correctly that their problem is employment, precisely. That's why I'm saying these five million characters, our children, you know, getting out of school, don't you think it is a decent thing? Don't you think it is, it is, it is the right thing to participate in an exercise that helps our country, our young people, instead of uh, 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 engaging in crime, in, 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 in abuse of uh, drugs, to be part, to get a job, by the way. In the last eight months, seven, whatever, eight months, I have launched the construction of 36,000 housing units in Kenya. Yeah? I went to Homer Bay. I, I was, last Friday, I was in South B here at the Bellevue, where they are building, I think, 2,000 something uh, houses. I will be going to Makongeni, hopefully, in the next uh, maybe three, four weeks or one month. Uh, to launch another 30,000 houses. The 36,000 units, there are close to 100,000 young people today working in those sites. Engineers, quantity surveyors, plumbers, technic uh, electricians, uh, carpenters, masons, all manner of people, including the women who sell food. Okay. It is a whole ecosystem. I was, I was very amazed in uh, South B. Uh, so a group of women were saying, Sisi, tunaitwa ploten. Sisi ndio tutakuwa tunauza chakula hapa. Bwana president, tunataka uhakikisha kwamba hii watu wasilete watu wengine. Because you see, it is a whole ecosystem. And I want to ask my countrymen and women, those of us who are employed, please, so let, us not, let us not hold in contempt okay. those who don't have jobs you or say, those who are not. You say it's not a tax. It is not a tax. What is it? No, it is a contribution you are making because if it was a tax, you know tax, it goes one way. Mm. You never get it. This is not a tax. Okay, why not? it is your money. Okay, the, why then, Mr. President, if it's not a tax, if that bill hypothetically says is passed by the National Assembly, it's legally binding? Yeah, of course. It's not a tax, you said. It is not a tax. Why would I contribute? And if I don't want? That's what the law says. <laughs> but That's, why are you passing it? Yeah, uh, but, but, uh, why, why am I, why am, uh, the, the question I'm asking you is, are you saying, uh, Abdi, that you don't think it is your business to contribute to the employment of the unemployed Kenyans? Okay, it's the, it's the responsibility it is of not the your Kenyan business. government. Okay, hang on, Mr. President. Who is Kenyan government? It, okay, Kenyan hang government hang is on, me hang and Hang on, you. Mr. President. You saw the mandate of the Kenyan people. Exactly. There is a represent, we can't represent all of us. Yes. I worked hard for my money. Yes. You said it's not tax. Mm. But there is a bill in Parliament. Mm. If it's passed, it's legally binding. Why would I make a contribution for others to succeed? <laughs> it's your business as the government. You are the head of state. You have the responsibility. You have the mandate. <laughs> and that's that, why, and that, and that is why, that's why the Constitution gives me the power to tax. But it's you who is leading and the government. And that's why the, the Constitution uh, <laughs> gives me the power to <laughs> sign things Mush, into law. But, but, okay. you know? So I am simply doing my job. Mr. President, let's get you the know? specifics very clear. Yeah. It's a very simple issue. Yes. You are saying it's not a tax. Mm. It is not a tax. That's the commander in chief saying. Yes, it okay. is not a tax. Hang on, let's go step by step. Yes. There's a bill that will come before parliament. Absolutely. Hypothetically, let's say it's passed. Mm. If it's not a tax, why would I contribute? Because it is the law. The law, Mr. No, President. Once it is passed, it is the law. Okay, wait, meaning, wait, meaning then it's a tax, and you understand it's a tax. Yeah, one, once it is passed, it is the law, and you have to contribute. Let me ask you. One rider, Mr. President. Let me ask you. you, no, you ask just allow me. Just Let me ask you, Abdi. Do you know that today you contribute 6% of your salary to NSSF? Correct. Why? It is not a tax. Mr. President, okay. hang on, hang on. on that, yeah. Mr. President. Okay. It's the same thing. Okay, hang on, it is Mr. the law. The okay. issue, no. though. Okay. The issue Th there though. There is the NHIF question, Mr. President. Yes. Which you have passionately talked about. I am very passionate about it. Which is still, again, because you have picked up, you have cherry picked on the NSSF, mm -hmm. but there is the NHIF component, which Correct. I still pay for. Yes. You pay for as well. Yes. But then, what's the point of contributing to the NHIF program, yet I go to the hospital and I only get paid for the bed? Precisely. That is why. I want to make NHIF work. You know how I'm going, I'm working on it, by the way.